Yeah, man, this 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 is this is like part of where I'm from. Like all this is what I do, man. Play cards, all that. Like, this is this is me, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of my niggas ain't here, but you know, this is this is what we do, man. Motherfucker, good problems was out here. <laughs> That's what it is, bro. That's when a life, a lot of my life had changed. I seen a lot of different things. Cause living on academy, you know what I'm saying? We always walk to school. We didn't have to ride the bus. We, you know what I'm saying, we see little things, but when we moved to Brooklyn, a lot changed. Um, we moved in there with our grandfather or whatever, um, and, and that was my first time experiencing death, you know what I'm saying, when we lived with him. Um, he died, we were we were about, i say around seven or eight, something like that, you know, he, he passed away. And that was my first time dealing with death, so it was, it was, it was kind of crazy, you know what I mean, and that's when my uncle, Uncle Vermont, um, he took over as like the leader of our family, so-called, you know what I mean. And not even understanding then, but I understand now how young he was and taking our family and, and pretty much taking control, you know, financially, um, emotionally. Like, he, he pretty much held together at a young age. And I never understood that, you know what I mean? He did what he did, like, far as, you know, making money, whatever, you know what I'm saying? I knew things that happened, but I didn't know the significance of it, you know what I mean, and why he was doing it. You know what I mean? I knew he, I walk in the house sometime, you know, in his bedroom, whatever, and money be scattered all over the bed. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Like, where all this money come from? I know he worked, but cash like this, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I never understood that, you know what I mean, until I got older, you know what I mean? And um, a lot of things transpired when I was young, you know what I mean? I, I, I seen so much, so much good, but I seen a lot of bad, you know what I mean? And growing up in Fellsburg, our cousin, you know, Bird, my, my aunt, I call her my aunt, but she's really like my cousin, but I call her Aunt Bird. She lives right across the street, and her yard is where it all went down. Yeah, and over this is the yard I was speaking on, you know what I mean, about, you know, everybody can out of this yard, my aunt house, my aunt Bird house. This right here, man, I'm telling you, nigga used to shoot dice, man, 
chill over there on the next tree. But this is the tree right here though. Niggas should get plenty of money on this tree. I mean, dice games, card games, um, you know, whatever fights, man. I mean, you might just see two, two niggas just straight up get it in in the yard. Like her yard, it pretty much went down, like, you know what I mean? So I seen everything from, from niggas hustling in the yard, you know what I mean? And I was always a curious guy, like, I'm the type to look and I'll take my perception of it and I'll use it on my own, you know what I mean? Whether it be good or bad. My name is Roberta Bunkman. I, I am Koi Alt. And through the years, I see him grow, grow up from a little child to a teenager, to a teenager, to an adult. A young man that had a big dream of doing something, not only for himself, but for his family. And with, and with this dream became a barbershop. Not only he worked under his uncle, Don Trey, from there he started to have his own business in Seaford, Delaware. Between these two young black men, I'm very proud of them. Because as the Bolden family, we came a long way. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a Bolden. My last name is Ellis, but I'm a Bolden. My father's Ellis, I'm a Bolden. And the Bolden family is known for hustling. You know what I mean? And I always heard that. You know, you, you hear people say it, but I always heard that. The Bolden family is known for hustling. And that's pretty much what we did, you know what I'm saying? What they did. So, you know what I mean? I, I kind of, you know what I mean, watched from a distance, but not knowing my house was where it was going down at. The only way back, hopefully they'll be back you know, by the time I'm, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm crazy. Damn. Yeah, I hope they'll be back soon, man. We're going to finish it up, man, that way he can... You know what I mean? We can, we can go and wrap it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one time when I was growing up, um, I say about two, three in the morning. You know what I'm saying? All I heard was boom. Everybody get down. Whatever, whatever, whatever. I, I, I you know, I, I get up. I come to the living room. I see, I see, I see, I see a masked up men. Boom. Shotgun. Not shotgun. Like AR-15s or something. Aiming at my brother's head. Hand tied behind his back. I'm like, what in the world is going on? You know what I'm saying? Whole time it's a drug raid. You know what I'm saying, man? My, thank God my mom was at work. You know, my uncle and all them, they everybody hand tied up. I'm like, what in the world is going on? I'm bugged out. You know what I mean? And, 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 and the whole time they, they raiding the spot, looking for drugs. You know what I'm saying? Being the uncle, you know, took care of his business. It was no drugs in the house. My name is Wim Ellis. Corey Ellis is my little brother, my only little brother. He's an inspiration, his dedication to his craft. You know, he respects his craft, what he do. You know, we always been close. We've always been close. But, you know, we bump heads. Two men in the house. You know what I mean? One mother. And, you know what I mean? Him, him being as my little brother, I wanted, you know what I mean? It was hard in the streets, you know what I'm saying? For all those, you know, when I was younger coming up, you know what I mean? You had to prove yourself. You had to get the respect, you know what I'm saying? I felt those, he went there. For all those is getting in the streets. So, you know, I do things, you know what I'm saying? We start fights, you know what I mean? Just to see where he at and, you know, but he ain't, he ain't shy away from nothing, you know what I'm saying? He definitely, he definitely had our turn, you know what I'm saying? But it was all the, it was all for the good, you know what I'm saying? But the turning point was, you know, when I heard my mom crying, you know what I'm saying? Talking about why my brother, why they can't get along, you know what I'm saying? She wants us to get along. And when I heard that, that really changed everything for me for all those is I'm hurting my mother in the process, you know? That's not the goal at all. So we had a little separation, you know what I'm saying, for the better. You know what I mean? Everything is for the good, even though it's something 
might transpire in a negative way, but it's all for the greater good, you know what I'm saying? So, as I came back, you know, we've been tight ever since, you know what I'm saying? He doing his thing, you know what I'm saying? And I'm here for him, support him, you know what I'm saying? But that mostly, that did it for us, you know what I'm saying? We needed that, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if my mom was to the point where she was just, you know, tired of dealing with that or whatever the case may be, because I really don't know, but we did move. And we ain't move far. We moved right on the other side of Brooklyn. You know what I mean? On the other side of Brooklyn, got our own house, whatever. And um that's kinda where that's kinda where I, I came into my teenage years, you know what I'm saying? Um if you had any advice to give me for the future <laughs> going like for, in life, not just business, but life, being though you're my mother, you've seen enough, you've seen a lot, you raised five kids. Um, what kind of advice would you give me to make it in life? I just see, I see that you're already dedicated. You work real hard because you know I always work hard. But just, just have more faith in God and believe and know that he's going to take you through whatever you're going through. And you've always been pretty strong, you know. Um, but that's that's my thing, you know. Just just believe in God and know God's gonna be there. And your siblings, you know, family is the most. At the end of the day, family is the most important thing. Don't never forget that. You know, some people think they can do it all by themselves, but a lot you can't. Mm -hmm. So those that's my that's my thing. That's what I'll always help keep me to strong and to go on in my life. Y'all help me. So that's why I felt like I had to help y'all. You know, it goes back and forth. If, if you could say anything um, from what, that I've changed from then till now, what would you what would you say? As a young as a younger me, from then till now, what would you say that I've changed or I've matured? In, as a, as a... You're a leader now. You, I mean, you've never really been a follower, but you're a leader and you're more determined than ever as far as like having a business. And I just respect you in that sense because it's like you're also a mentor to a lot of the younger kids that's coming up. All right, I'm Trey. I mean, buff nephew. I mean, I learned a lot from him, man. Love him to death. I mean, he's hard on me sometimes, but I know it's only love. You want to keep it real. And that's just him. I mean, I can't say he work hard, man. He stay on his grind. He's very determined. He got a lot of drive for what he do. Always want to perfect his craft, I mean, same as me on the court, I mean, gotta have heart, man. I wouldn't say he's cocky, but, but I mean, you gotta have a little bit of cockiness in what you do, but for the most part, it's confident, man. That's, that's all it is. It's the only way you're gonna get better. I mean, I see it in him every day, get up every morning, crying, hustling. That's him, man. He love what he do. I mean, I learned a lot from him, man. Love him. That's advice Buff ever gave me. I say never tell, never let somebody tell you you can't do nothing. I mean, you may start off hard. I mean, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And you know, when you got people in your corner, like he always tell me, you know, it feels good to have people in your corner. I mean, you always got some support, encouragement, so that way you got somebody there for you. If you fall, get back up. You know, so you're, you're like the future. So I. That's good. All right, same question to you, Passion. Like, how how you think I matured and how I've grown from when we were when we were kids to me now? Since our relationship is different, of course, from me and mom to me and yours, me being your brother and she being my mother. How you know? How would you say in your opinion how I changed and how I grew? You know, I was thinking about. It's funny you should ask the question because when we were on our way over here, I remember when Corey was about. I say about nine and ten. You remember me and you and um, Calvin? We went up there to see Keisha. She was living across the bridge. And my husband, Calvin, said, he said, you know what? He said I could sit there and have a, a conversation with him. Corey was only about nine or ten years old, but the dialogue that he had, he was such a, a, a child of wisdom, even at a young age. So you can sit down with him, and there's a lot of kids you can't really, you know, because they got that childlike mind. Um, but he wasn't like that. You know, he really had, um, he had that, that extra, I don't know, like the old wisdom, if you will. And it takes that in order to really um, go further in life. You know, because it, it takes wisdom in order to do the things that you've done. 
and you've had it for a while. So if I say there's anything changed, um, I think there is more of a humbleness um, in your conversations now. Um, being that you've gone through some things, a lot of times you don't get humble until you go through some things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and that's if I could say that, that would that would be um, it. You're a little bit more humble than you were. As far as business, always keep your mind on opportunity. You see what you see what society needs. You see what it's lacking. You see what they don't have. And if you have a way to provide it, you provide it, and you always got your business. You always got your business. Keep yourself a step above, and when I say a step above, I'm not saying better than because your colleagues are going to be there, you know. But we, we strengthen one another, you know. A lot of times people don't like their colleagues and different things like that. I'm not talking about that, but you see um, how um, what's needed in the industry, and you hone in on your skills, you hone in and offer that, um, and that's how you become a step above, you know, in the industry, you know, that you're in. So that's what I would suggest: keep your mind on what's needed and provide what they need. I guess we both. 12, maybe 13. I know I was going to middle school because we started catching the bus right down the way. So I was probably in middle school. And that's where, you know what I mean, I met a lot of my friends. What's going on, fellas? Everybody out there, man. Just flesh the ball, man. You feel me? Hanging with my nigga, Buff. You know what I'm saying? My man. I mean, I met Buff, man. Elementary school, man. We was young. Real young, man. I want to say I was like, like nine when I met Buff. You know what I'm saying? We grew up from the, uh, down the road from each other, man. Always cool, man. You know what I'm saying? Our family was pretty, pretty um, cool with each other, man. So we always had a great relationship, you know what I mean, for years, man. I've been known about over 20 years, man. Always been, always been love. Working with him almost two years, yeah, definitely. Every day, man, you know what I'm saying? It's all love. We we have debates, but we keep it love between our debates, you feel me? It's always, you know what I mean, cordial between us. No animosity ever, you know what I'm saying? That's just what it is. That's hustle's me. This hustle is crazy, man. He showed me how to hustle, man. When it comes to this Bulba thing, you feel me? Like, he put me on to a lot of stuff, man. Show me how to make some good money, man. Doing better work, you know what I'm saying? Less work, but better work, you feel me? And make it, making that money, man. He showed me a lot. Because before, you know, I was working in another bar shop before, but you know what I mean? My drive wasn't, it, it's hard, you feel me? You feel, so because I was around the area where, you know what I'm saying, really wasn't, you know what I mean, progressing. So when Bob, you know what I mean, called me up and told me about he, him getting a shot, you know what I mean? I just, it was, my drive got crazy, you feel me, because I knew, I knew working with him, his drive is already there, so you know what I mean, I had to match his drive, I can't be, he, I can't be 50, he had 120, it's not going to work. I'm meeting guys from Preston, Jonestown area, and that's how we clicked up, I met, I met Sean, I met Sam Batson, I met um, D-Trey Late, I mean, I met a lot of them guys, man, that's, that's my homies to this day. You know what I mean? I don't see them all the time, but that's where I met. You know, I met a lot of them guys, and you know, I just cut up with them guys all the time, and um, just trip, man. Middle school, man, it was it was a growing experience. That's why I'm coming to my own personality now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, middle school, you know, you you meet different guys, and you know, everybody everybody gravitated towards me because of you know the, the funny guy, whatever the case may be. I'm in the in crowd, but I never did the in, of what the in crowd did. Like I never smoked, I never drunk. Drunk alcohol or none of that. I never did that. And I still don't. You know what I mean? But I was that guy though. You know what I'm saying? I could say that Buff is that dude. I used to like play ball. You know what I mean? I play ball a little bit, basketball, whatever the case may be. But I never did sports like that. But I was always that dude. I felt like that dude anyway until the point of high school. I'm Kenny Smith. Black people would open up at least two or three food restaurants in Felsburg. They might have stayed open all together about a year. Chinese place been here for what? Ten years, non-stop, still moving. You know what I mean? And, and, and they, had a, they had a good soul food spot too. A good soul food spot. And it's in the same sugar Chinese spot. Right, right next door to the Chinese They're spot. always making a new pizza and bar. Yeah. Every two years it's a new one. Oh man, that's my best friend, man. We've been um, we've been friends for a minute, man. He's like my big brother, you know what I mean? Um, love and death. Going back to how we met, man. We met, you know, we met, I was in third grade, man. And it was a crazy day, man. Look, I was in third grade, and I had to use the bathroom real bad. The teacher wouldn't let me go all day. So, you know what I mean? So, I ran to the bathroom, whatever, you know what I mean? Really, had, I had to go, man. So, you know what I mean? I go ahead and use the bathroom, I accidentally, I pissed on him. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you know, we got pissed on him or whatever. You know what I mean? So we got into a little fight, man. You know what I mean? We was, 
it could have been real nasty, but then, you know, it's a small world, man. I didn't know that my, you know, my uncle and his uncle had been best friends, you know what I mean? They were best friends, and so it was pretty much squashed, and you know what I mean? We didn't become the best of friends, because, you know, I pissed on him, man, you know? He was, at the, he was in the wrong place at the wrong time, you know? So I pissed on his shoe, I mean? So we weren't the best of friends, man, but, you know, he used to tease me and pick on me all the time, man, like, you know, but we got older, we became closer, man, and you know what I mean, he just, you know what I mean, like I said, as we got, you know, to a certain age, you know what I mean, really started clicking and, and everything, but, you know, the change that I've seen in him, man, you know, he, he had a lot of growth, you know, especially in the last couple of years, you know, when we was in high school, you know what I mean, we sit back, like I said, we weren't the best of friends, but we talked, you know what I mean, he wasn't always the most confident person, you know what I mean, because he didn't have everything he wanted, you know what I mean, he, he was, he would see, you know, you know, you see other people with stuff, and you know, we ain't always, you know, we came from, pretty much we came from the bottom, you know. We came from, you know, we really wasn't doing things real flashy or everything like that. We really wasn't, you know, we weren't doing nothing real extravagant, you know. And, you know, he would he would feel a little bad about it, you know, he'd say some things. We had a situation where he would, he would holler at me and say, you know, little stuff, man. But, like I said, he used to tease me, pick on me, crack jokes on me all the time. He used to bully the shit out of me. You know what I mean? He used to he was a fucking bully, man. You know what I mean? This nigga's a fucking bully, like for real. This nigga teased the fuck out of me my whole fucking middle school through high school. He got my ass beat a couple times. You know what I mean? I would sit up and tell this nigga something, man. And the next thing I know, he done told somebody else. And now here I am getting my head pounded in against the window because of this nigga. You know what I mean? But, you know what I mean? The growth I've seen, man, you know. He was always determined, you know what I mean? He was determined to do something with himself. You know, he was determined to, you know what I mean, to stand out and, and have, you know, he wanted, he had goals he wanted to accomplish, and, you know, and I've seen him accomplish those goals. And so, you know what I mean, that's what, that's the change I've seen in him, you know, how he's changed, you know. And it was a situation, you know, he called me late one night, man, somebody done took and stole his, you know, they came to his house, stole his safe out the house, man. He was broken, he was heartbroken, man. I mean, like I said, he was heartbroken because that was, you know, it was pretty much all the money he had. And they took everything he had, you know what I mean? And, you know, I talked to him. I was just, the only thing I could tell him, man, you're going to get it back, you know what I mean? Like, a lot of times I end up being a person to sit there, you know, when he, when he get off track mentally a lot of times, I sit back, you know what I mean? I try to talk, you know, talk to him and, and get his mind back right, man. Like I said, you're talented, man. You're gifted, you know? You know what I mean? You put, you put all that together. And you work hard, man, you know, whatever you lose, you're going to get back. Because God gave you a gift that, you know, all you got to do is capitalize on it. And you can do whatever you want with it. You know, and then, you know, I talked to him a couple weeks later, man. He was just like, you know what, man? They took, they took, they took four from me. I done came back. I got something. You know what I mean? I done sat here, I done, you know, they done, they, people done took his rims off his car, man. You know, this dude took his motor out of his car. You know what I mean? His, his name been, been pissed on and, and shit on and drugged through the mud. You know what, man? He just had the ambition and, and, and the hard work, you know, keep his mind straight. You know what I mean? He, he got off track a couple times, but, you know what I mean? He got his mind in the right place where he could take and, you know, come back from all that, you know, and, and, and achieve more. And not only achieve more, at the same time, he sat back and he done you know, mentor other people and, and you know, try to, he tries his best to, to give other people hope because at the end of the day, just let you know, man, I did it and you can too. You know what I'm saying? My personality didn't change nowhere from middle school to high school. I was the same fat kid, funny. You see what I'm saying? And that kind of, it kind of hurt me, but I mean, I was still that guy, per se. You know what I'm saying? I was still that dude. And I used to love to draw. Love to draw. I draw, man. I, I used to sit in class and draw people's faces and draw all kind of stuff, man. You know, I mean, that's my thing. So, I guess drawing and playing sports, but I never made team football. I always quit because the, the summer, the summer, the summertime practices used to kill me. So I never played football. I never did nothing. That was just me. And, and I, I sat back and watched my friends get all the females. Right, that's when I met Rob and Jack. You feel I me? Mean, that's when. Smitty he came on with middle school, but me and Smitty we were always, you know, some semi cool. It was one of those things where he popular, I'm popular. You're not gonna tell me you more cooler than me. You can't tell me you dress better than me. And that's kind of how me and Smitty was always. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I mean? I see these guys, they they, they getting chicks, man. And Jack, I met Rob Jack, he getting the girls. Sam Bassett, he getting the girls. Everybody loved Ty because he's the cute one. He's the small one, but he's cute. 
Sean, he's cool, he's cute, the girls love him. So all my niggas is pretty much getting all the chicks' tails, you feel me? You know, he's the rugged one, you feel me? So he, you know, the girls love the hard niggas, you know what I'm saying? So he getting chicks, and I, then you got Buff. You know what I'm saying? Then, you know, Buff's cool, you know, he he's okay, you know what I mean? He's fat, but he's a cool guy, you know what I mean? So now it's like, I need, I need to be, I need to be, how do I put myself in the same light without having to do the things that everybody else did? And that's kind of how um, I came on until the point where, well, I'll say, I'll say this. When I was in middle school, when I, was in, when I got in high school and I, and I started cutting hair, how I started cutting hair is a crazy story because my brother, Joe Rock, he always cut our hair. You know what I'm saying? Always cut our hair. What are we doing well, in here? Joe Rock. Um, Growing up, being my um, little brother, and um, got a good relationship, so I started cutting the hair, and uh, I didn't know you was watching, you were paying attention all the time, and just picked up on it, and ran with it and did your thing. Yeah, I mean, because I, 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 like, like, I was, like I was saying um, on my early part of my, uh, my segment, I was telling like how when we were growing up, you know what I mean, you put hair by hair in the house, and you started, you didn't turn the house to the operation of the barbershop, you know what I'm saying? And I used to watch you cut everybody. I mean, it turned to a point where the house and, and the kitchen was the shop, you know what I'm saying? And how, when you know, when you like, met Ty or whatever, and you were standing in Denton or whatever, and, and, and we wouldn't pay you to cut our hair, so we could our hair cut last, but if you had to run, we wouldn't get no haircut. And, and you know, you left a clipper bag in the room, and I would, I would, I would go in there and get your clippers and cut my hair and all that. So, you know what I mean? And I said that a little earlier, whatever. And um, also, like, you know what I mean? Like, even to the point where growing up, you know what I mean? How we, we, we pretty much, our family, man, we, we did everything, like, from the hustling to, we, like, the bowling name was kind of like mud at, at one point, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and for you, you kind of went the opposite way of all that, you know what I mean? I seen when you when we, when, when I was growing up, you know what I mean? I didn't like that kind of lifestyle, and, and I said, well, I, he don't indulge it, but he seems pretty successful, you know what I'm saying? Like, he had a nice car, you know what I mean? He had rims on his car and all that, so that's kind of why I gravitated towards you and everything that you did, because you were more on the positive side, you know what I'm saying? I could deal with that, you know what I mean? And, and, and that's why I, went, why I always went to follow you. When you left the house, I wanted to go, you know what I'm saying? So, and, 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 that, and that aspect, like, why, why didn't you gravitate towards the street life? And, and you pretty much did. Well, basically, man, like, as a kid, nobody knew my life story but me. So I'm going to look at it like this. I grew up with no parents, so I was a loner early in my childhood. So rather than take to the streets, I really, my mind was like really, really just trying to find a way to fit in. Not really fit in on the streets, but just trying to fit in society and try to find my way in. I don't know, but my grandfather, that's really my real dad. Well, I watched him, you know, just watched him, and I think that's where I got my hunger from, my hustle, like, in the shop. That's why I started real early in, in my life, and, you know, I just seeing how he grind to provide for the family, and I just, uh, just, uh, just grabbed home over there, and just really, really, really got in, got in seriously, you know, I just, you know. Yeah, okay, so. I mean, like I was saying earlier in my, you know, throughout my interview, I was saying that um, how you're not my brother, you know what I mean? But I was always raised you, Ashley, and Keisha, as being my brother and sister. But how, how did losing your parents early on in your life, you know what I mean, affect you, good and bad? Bad, no guidance, no. I mean, I had a place to stay, and you know, I had food and shelter, but I didn't have that fatherly guidance, you know, to really push me into where I believe I could have went, like sports and stuff like that. I didn't know what I'm saying. I didn't have the back, you know what I'm saying? So I felt as though if I had that, I would have done something totally different with my life. So, you know, I got kids now, and, you know, I just, uh, I always tell them that, um, you know, they got purpose. So if I went out of high school, if I went to college and did something, something else, you know, they wouldn't be here. So I tell them that, you know, they got purpose. So it's all in God's plan, you know.
we didn't, we didn't talk about right. it. So, I mean, when I started cutting hair, you know, when I, when I finally got to the point where I, I decided I wanted to cut, and, and, and you know, and I asked you, you know, years ago, if I could cut with you on the weekends, I mean, did you think that was a good route for me? Yeah, because, you know, I seen your hustle, and I, I mean, I mean, I seen the hunger, she was never late, always on time, stayed, came in early, stayed late, so I knew you had it. And I'm like, and then, you know, when you start cutting, I was like, yeah, he got it. So I was saying, they're ready. Go ahead and start flying the drone. You know, more power to him. So how, how do you see the growth in me from that point back in 2005, 6 to the point now? How do you see the growth in me? And you figure the growth is there. You figure you start out just a rental chair for me, and then you got your own business. And then you got your own kids. And you got your own responsibility. Because life so, was in Philadelphia now. Let's speak for itself. So, to wrap it up, um, if you had any advice to give me from this point on to being your age, when you're 39, 40 now? 41. 41. You're 41. If you, and I'm 27. You got any, what kind of advice did you give me to help me become more successful from this point to where you are now? Stay on your grind. Watch some niggas. <laughs> but um, just, just like, you know, stay low key, master on the radar, and just keep going with your going. So, um, you know, when you getting your hair cut from your brother, that means you're not paying. But being though you're not paying, that means you go last. So, being though we got to go last, if he had things to do, being though, you know, he got a girlfriend, you know what I'm saying, stay with her sometime, he might not come home for two or three days, we might not get a haircut. So, what I do, I go in his bedroom, get his clippers. I cut my own hair, you know what I'm saying? And be it I mess it up, might do a good job, man, it really didn't matter, you know what I'm saying? But I'm practicing. Every every time I need to cut, I'm going to his room, getting his clippers, cutting my hair. Going to his room, getting his clippers, cutting my hair. To the point where people be noticing, my, my, my boys in school notice, man, but who cut your hair? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, I cut my own hair, what you mean? Like, yo, she look all right, you know what I mean? Look all right. Um, Sometimes I used to take my clippers when I was in high school, take my clippers. After the fact, I got my own clippers, you know what I'm saying? Because you said whatever. I got my own clippers. I used to take them to school, cut, yeah, I stay out of school, cut my boys from Jonestown. I never see them or whatever. So I cut the hair, you know, after school, whatever, whatever. Go home, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. So now, I'm, I, I'm, that's, a, that's a side hustle, though. Yeah, that's just something that I do in my spare time. You cut, cut, a, cut a nigga hair, too, you know what I'm saying? To the point where they, they calling me up. Yo, buff, man, I need to cut. Yo, can you get me? I'm like, man, listen, man, I'm. Wherever I'm at, you know what I mean? I'm not cutting no hair. Today's not day to cut no hair, you know what I mean? Man, look, I got, you know, I'll pay you, man. I got seven dollars for you. Cool, all right? Now I'm hustling. High school, go home, cut a little hair. Just a little solid. Keep, just keep, keep enough money in my pocket to do a little something after school, you know what I mean? Not, no real big deal. Never thought I was gonna go any further than that. The better I got, the more clients I got. And it's crazy because my brother owned a barbershop right in Fellowsburg. So, Everybody, I'm getting clients, you know what I mean? I'm getting clients around the way. Some people might go to rock, some people might come to me, you know what I mean, certain time. And mind you, I'm only 15, 16 years old, but I'm jamming like I'm a barbershop. First day of school, I'm cutting like it's a barbershop. You know, you wouldn't believe it, you know what I'm saying? Yo, Papa, man, we gotta go to school, whatever, whatever, but I'm gonna come, come to you get my hair cut. You know what I mean? First day, first day of school, man, I'm cutting like it's, it's, it's a barbershop, you know what I'm saying? You know, time go on, you know what I mean? Years go by, you know, time, Going goes along till you know graduation coming, whatever, whatever. Years go by, graduation coming. Um, that's probably one of the biggest turning points of my life. Um, it's like a bittersweet moment, you know what I'm saying? It's time for me to graduate and, and be on my own. But then I want to graduate. But then, am I ready to be an adult? Because I don't have, I don't have no, I don't have no outlet. You know what I mean? Cutting hair, with, being a barber was not in my plans at all. So it's like, what do I do next? You know what I'm saying? And, and, and well, time comes, I graduate, you know, it's, it's, it's a great moment for me. Um, time, you know, I'm, I'm cutting hair still at the house. To my mom, you know, she, 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 she's hating it at this point because you got hair in the yard, you got people standing outside the house, like it's a trap house, there's none of that going on. You know what I mean? So she's like, who you can't be cutting hair and you're not cleaning the hair. Okay, I cut hair, leave hair in the yard, boom, roll up. Mike got about $70, $80 in my pocket, you know what I mean? Quick day, roll up. And, 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 you know, being out of high school, my, my habit was getting up, going back to Brooklyn, chilling with my cousin Lurch. That became a habit. You know what I'm saying? Like, wake up, chill with Lurch, come home. Wake up, 
Go back to Brooklyn. Chill with Lurch. Chill with him all day. Come home. And the whole time I'm seeing Lurch, he do what he do. You know what I'm saying? Like, Lurch always been kind of troublesome. Like, Cuz was the coolest guy you can ever meet, but he had a lot going on with him. Like, he just do whatever he want to do. You know what I'm saying? And I watch him sell dope, smoke weed, drink alcohol. I seen him do pretty much do it all. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, that ain't going to be me. You know what I'm saying? I love him with a passion, but that ain't going to be me because that's like, that, that's like a, 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 a going down a one way. You know what I'm saying? So that, I said, you know, it's time for me kicking gear. You know what I mean? I got to put an application in somewhere. And my first job, well, yeah, my, well, my first job, you know what I mean, as, as, as a, an adult, I'm working at Allen Foods, right? I'm around like 18. Hate it, man. Hate it, man. I think that's one of the worst jobs to ever go. Like, working at Allen Foods, you, you, you pretty much got to, if you ain't doing something gravy, you pretty much got to be a robot, man. You, you doing what they tell you to do. And that's not me, man. I, I, nobody's my boss. And, I, and it's crazy to say it like that because, you know, I mean, everybody got somebody to answer to, but that's not my mentality. You're not going to tell me what to do because I feel as though I'm going to do what I want. You know what I mean? Within my rights now. Within my rights and being legal and all that, I'm, I'm going to do what I want to do. And, and, and I worked there four months, man. I remember the guy, I remember like it was yesterday, Otis, man. Dude named Otis at Allen Foods, man. Uh, Corey Kamara. I need you to go package these chicken tenders up, and then after that, I need you to get on the, I'm on, I'm on the bony. If you're at the bony, you know what I'm talking about. Get on the line and pull the breast down off the, man, I'm like, listen, man, my hands hurt, man. Nah, you get up on that line now. I said, listen, who the fuck do you think you talking to? I hopped off the line, told him, fuck you, and fuck everybody in here, and I spit on the floor, kick the condemn bucket over, and walk slam out. That's exactly what I did. Yeah, fuck Allen Foods. I, I, I'll never work Allen Foods again. And then right here, where the hair would stick at, I faded it this way. I faded it up and I faded it to the front. Just to give it a different look. To make it look real, real intricate. But it's not, it's not, it's not. The clippers and help you. It's nothing wrong with help. It's nothing wrong with not knowing and wanting to know. I, I mean, that's how I've been my whole life. A lot of guys in jail, nothing to raise it because that's one of the tools they use. But, I wasn't, I wasn't, I never used a razor. I called my brother, he never used a razor. So we had a guy come to our school and teach us the razor. And he, you know, he, you know, he do a little demo or whatever, we practice on balloons. It's nothing the same. And look at this beard, look at both sides of the beard. And that's, and that's light, and I ain't even shaped it up or nothing yet. That's just what I'm, I'm looking forward to look like, what it look like towards the end. And then I shape it up, put the razor on and all that, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna look like new money. And from that day forward, man, I felt like, man, you know what? This is not. <laughs> I swear to God, what I did, though. I swear to what I did, yo. Hell yeah. It's a condemn bucket over. Yeah, the condemn bucket is a bucket full of guts and chicken heads and shit. man. So, but yeah, man, um, from that day forward, man, I, feel, I, I, I said, man, this is not for me, man. You know, we trying to cut y'all up. I see. Boy, we trying to knock y'all the box for real. You know, we can't. We really can't. But you taking all my men customers. We can't have that. Only thing I'm gonna do is twist no drill up and break my hair. But I fell you up, I put a dollar on your car, I, I put all cops on you. Yeah, yeah, y'all ain't going nowhere. I'm trying to get some of my men back though. So I was there four months strong, man. I was out of there, man. Going home, right back to my, uh, my, my routine, man. Waking up, go chill with Lurch. Go home, wake up, go chill with Cuz, man. And you know what I mean? I'm like, man, you know, this, I said, man, you know, I, I see myself doing something wrong. That's what I tell myself. I see myself doing something wrong, man. Let me go try again. Maybe Allen Food wasn't for me. So what I do, I go to B&G, Pickle Factory. Another factory work. I'm like, man, B&G wasn't bad because I got my forklift license there, so I'm driving forklift. But it's still, man, I was dropping shit, man. Like, they wasn't feeling me, man. Like, they was ready to put me on the line. I'm like, man, I'm not working no more lines, man. I'm not working no more lines, you know what I'm saying? So what I do? And then this is this is only that was only like two months. So now I'm like eight, like six months working. You know what I mean? I didn't quit both jobs. So I'm like, man, I, I'm kind of at my wit's end for real. You know what I'm saying? Like, what do I do next? You know, mom will be cutting at the house. You know what I'm saying? I, I do have an option to ask my brother to cut with him, but I'm not licensed. You know what I mean? Do we want to risk me working with him with no license? You know what I'm saying? So. Long story short, I, I did end up asking my brother, you know what I'm saying? 
You know what I mean? He didn't give me an answer right away, but in the midst of all that, you know what happens, man. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, it's more like a, a brother relationship. You know, barber, brother, mostly like family, best friends, you know, whatever you want to call it. You know, been tight, been tight for a long time. You know what I mean, first off, me and his brother was tight. His brother moved. Me and him start clicking. You know what I mean? Start hanging out just about every day. You know what I mean, it's been like that for like the last 10 years. I'm going to say I'm about 05, I think, 04, 05. So I cut my hair every day. I mean, uh, all the time. And, uh, you know what I mean? All the time wasn't all that sharp. You know what I mean? A little slick hair, Nick there. But uh, I think oh, everybody uh, used to get a haircut when he was younger, made it who he is now. And you got to thank his mom a lot because uh, sometimes she ain't like all the people over his house. But, uh, you got to thank her because she's the one that let him. They let him get his shine off. Oh, they ain't know that he uh, they ain't know he used to hustle hard on the blocks. They ain't they don't know about him in the dirty t-shirts and the sweatpants, man. Yeah, they ain't know he was uh, that was a young man. He was copping, you know what I mean? He was copping some major weight, you know what I mean? Got knocked off a couple of times, you know what I mean? Niggas was hating, but you know how that go. It go, you know what I mean? When it come down to the hustle game, people, a lot of people don't know because the uh, internet, they don't know that uh, Buffalo not ain't really not like that. A lot of people get him. On Facebook, think he just laughing all the time and all that. I mean, he does laugh all that, but uh, far as he does care about people, and he uh, he got a lot of love for people. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, it's not all about like people think he really mean and talk trash all the time, but that's just a you know I mean, a character. You know what I mean? Just something just for people to look at on the internet. But far as real life, you know like that. Very kind. You know what I mean? Show a lot of love. You know what I mean? It's nothing like that. It's like two different people. My boss say. I said, you know, like, for the most part, man, people got me confused, man. Like, you know, I, I've been judged off social media my whole life. Just with, with, some of the stuff I can take blame for because I did it to myself. You know yeah. what I'm saying? The whole image of having money and flashing money and all that. I, 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 can, take the image, I can take the blame for some of that. But I, it's been times where I've been hanging around females and, and they be like, Buff, you a cool guy, you know what I'm saying? You a real nigga, but you just too cocky for me. You arrogant. And, and my mom, like, where the fuck you know me from, though? You know what I'm saying? You don't know me. You don't know nothing about me. All you know is what you see on Facebook and whatever status I choose to write. And sometimes I write what I want you to see. You know what I'm saying? I, I put myself in a certain light, like, as if, okay, I'm not that nigga. Of course I'm not that nigga. You know what I'm saying? I'm nobody. But I'm going to make these motherfuckers believe who the fuck I am. And sometimes you can take it as you want. You, you take it as cocky. Take, some take it as confident. Some take it as arrogant. Some take it as... That boy know what he's talking about. That boy know what he's doing. But at the same time, you can't do that. And, and, and Facebook, Instagram, you can be who you want to be. Everybody know that. You got so many niggas sell dope online. They don't sell shit. You got so many girls in favor of relationship. I love my boo. I love my man. I love my hubby. The same bitch be in my inbox trying, you know what I'm saying? Oh, fuck that nigga. He ain't like that. He broke. I want a nigga with money. You see what I'm saying? Like, all that corresponds in being fake and all that corresponds in using social media for right or for wrong, you know what I'm saying? And that's what they do, you know what I mean? Everybody's fake and fraud, and that, that, should, be, that should be killing me. I, I, I consider myself a real dude, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? I, I, you can take, use Facebook and, and, and say, I am cocky, you know what I'm saying? Would I agree? Probably so. But you gotta know me before you can use that as your opinion. That's why all my niggas tell you, one of the realest niggas you ever meet, and not, and not only real, but I'm a humble dude. I take, my, I take my craft serious because that's what provides for me and my family, so. I definitely take cutting hair serious, you know what I'm saying? Anything I do, throwing parties, you know what I'm saying? Anything that's gonna gain me capital and revenue, I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a back it to the fullest. And that's one thing that, you know what I mean, I, I take serious is cutting hair. And I put my, my skill against any nigga, I don't care how long they've been in the game. Whether, I, whether I, I'm better than them or not, but we can go at it, you know what I mean? So. <laughs> All right, how we doing? My name is Jeff. I'm, I'm really Corey's cousin, but I'm more like his uncle. But I want to tell this story about Corey because him and my son and his brother William were real, real tight. But there was one time my sister told Corey to take a sweet potato pie <laughs> to his mother. And the next day, my sister asked his mother, said, Vet, um, how was the sweet potato pie? <laughs> and she said, What pie? She said, Well, I sent a pie by Corey to you yesterday. She said, well, I didn't get it. And when they talked to Corey and asked what happened, Corey took the pie off to himself and ate the whole pie. No, no breaks. <laughs> Literally no cold smash. That's, 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 that's one of the good stories I, re I remember about him. But um, we thank God that he's, uh, he, uh, he's doing better today. And we're proud of what he's doing and growing up to be a man and 
trying to take care of his children, so we we happy about that. Yeah, but I, I love him. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love him. Yeah, he's, he's a lot of fun. <laughs> Corey, lighten up on the sweet potato pie. <laughs> So one day I'm walking back Brooklyn or whatever, you know what I'm saying? I'm chilling, bopping, you know what I'm saying? I see I see my man Tails, Martel, you know what I'm saying? So Tell hit me up like, man, bop, man, what you doing out here, man? You always at like this motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, I'm always out here, man, you know, just chilling, man, you know, just, 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 just shooting the breeze for real. You know what I mean? He like, man, yo, real talk, man, you need to get some, you need, you need to get some work, man. You need, you out here anyway, you know what I'm saying? Why you ain't getting some of this money? I'm like, Cause now you know that ain't even me. You said that wasn't even us when we was in school. You said you wouldn't even do nothing like that. You're like, man, fuck that. You know what I'm saying? We get hand. He go in his pocket, pull out a knot. Now, everybody's intrigued by money. You know what I'm saying? Money, money make the world go around. You know what I'm saying? They say money the only thing. Money ain't everything, but theoretically, it's everything. Without money, you can't do nothing. And here I am with 20 hours in my pocket from, from two haircuts. Yeah, like even um, you know, one of my, my next my next is gonna be is um is a salon, man. Three purchase salon. I'm waiting on a um, few things to, to, to tighten up, you know, as far as uh, opening it, but you got three stages. I'm, my shampoo bowl ready to go, man. This is my next thing, man. Like, I'm always trying to build and make sure I can always, you know, grow as a businessman, as a person, you know. So this is this is next up for me, man. My salon, man. I'm on some, some more dryers and stuff. And, this is next. So be on the lookout for that too. Step your salon, step your stylist up salon in conjunction with your bar bar barbershop, man. Yes, sir. The whole time I'm thinking like, man, should I really do it though, man? Like, but this ain't you, man. You you know what to do to what it's done to your family over the years. You know what I'm saying? Your family that went through it, been to jail, whatever. Do you really want to take that risk? I break down. You know what I'm saying? I break down. Um, I called my cousin up, yo, like, cuz, man, you know, man, I just quit the job not too long ago, man. I'm, I'm, I'm broke for real. You know what I'm saying? What can you do for me? You know what I mean? He like, um, what you, what you, what you saying? Like, what, 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 what you saying? Like, what you, you kidding, right? You, you joking, right? Like, nah, no, man, like, man, I mean, just give me a little ounce of something, you know, work a little ounce of something so I can get some money in my pocket. You know what I mean? I ain't got no money. So, long story short, cuz, we're like, um, Man, if you for real, for real, come back the way, you know what I'm saying? I got you. So I go back the way, cuz she eat me with a little ounce of weed or whatever. And I mean, you know, like, man, yo, she'll she you know, she'll she'll hunt, man, you know what I'm saying? And I get it from you, you know what I mean, whatever, you know what I'm saying? So I go home with this ounce of weed, look, keep just just staring at it, like, damn, like, are you you know what I mean? Is this really you? This is this is not you. You you buff. You coy, like you you don't do things like this. You the good guy. You the guy that that just tell the other other guys what to do and what's right and, and, and you know what I'm saying? But when you ain't got no money in your pocket, what else are you supposed to do? You know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? I go in the kitchen, man. I, 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 you know what I mean? I, I take the plastic bags out of there and I sit in my room and call cuz. I'm like, yo, cuz, yo, yo, how do I sell this? You know what I'm saying? I, I don't sell, you know what I mean? Like, man, yo, a gram 10 hours, man. You back up 28 gram, you 10 hours. I'm like, how do I, how do, I do that? You got to get this, you gotta go to a scale. I'm like, man, I ain't got no scale. Never bought no scale. Ain't gonna buy no scale. You know what I'm saying? You know what I did? Bye. Took 28 bags and bagged up 25. 25 bags of weed, $10 a piece, man. Let's go. So first thing I do, call up Lurch. Like, Lurch, yo, what's up, yo? Man, yo, I got, I got, some, I got some green. Whatever. Everything's a joke. All right, cup. I, I, I'm on my way back, back the way right now. I go back the way, go put my little weed up. No, God, what are you doing with that? You know what I'm saying? He looking at me like, you know what I'm saying? What, what the, the streets ain't got you, huh? Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I mean? I'm like, okay, I sell a little weed, make $250, shoot cousins, $100. Now, it's time for me to buy my own. So, I hit cousins back again. Here, here, go, hunt. You know what I'm saying? Let me, let me get it on. So, now I'm doing this for about a, about a good month or so, month or two. And I mean, now I'm buying about two or three onions. You got weed, you know what I'm saying? So, now I got a couple hundred dollars. It's cool. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm running to my man, again. Like, man, what's up, man? You know what I'm saying? Man, I'm trying to get some money, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like, man, shit, you, you know what I'm saying? You, you doing that, you might well, you know what I'm saying? Get a little soft, I mean, get a little coke, you know what I mean? You know, you, you ain't got to do crack, but you can do the soft. So I'm like, no, 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 because I'm telling you, man, you ain't got to be out here all day, you got to be on the block, man, you can just be, you just work from the phone, work from yourself. 
So, cuz, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And I'm telling you right now, at the time, some boys in town was robbing niggas. You know what I'm saying? They was doing some crazy robbing niggas, robbing niggas. So what happened was they ended up robbing this dude. They robbed him for a key. Robbed him for a key of coke. He's like, man, the, the boy, you know what I'm saying? You know, he got some work. He's selling onions for 600. Onions and coke for 600. Now, at this time, onions are going for like eight. He got them for six. He's like, yo, I can go holler right now, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, I ain't, like, I ain't even got the money, cuz. You know what I'm saying? He's like, well, don't worry about the money. What I'm gonna do for you is, you give me three, I put the other three to it, and we can go get that, you just owe me 300 miles. So I'm like, I'm like, man, this is pressure because of course I want this money that he got, but do, do I wanna risk my freedom and all that to, to get some money? And me being only like 18, I'm like, you know what? Fuck it, if I do get jammed up, man, it's my first time, they ain't gonna slam me. Man, let's do it. Man, soon we hit the bend, he pull out right behind me, boom, jump behind him. I said, cut, I told you put the seatbelt on, yo. I said, I told you. He gonna pull us, yo. We gonna pull us. So we pass him, we go out on the bend, go on, on Felder Highway. He waits till we get out all the way on the highway, to hit the lights on him. So we not in town, so we not, we not around a whole lot of people. So he can pretty much do us dirty. So that's what I'm thinking, you know what I mean? So we on the, we on the bypass of Felder He pull us over, you know, license registration. I'm, I'm, I'm great. License, registration, insurance. Um, he said, pull you over because your passenger ain't have a seatbelt on. I look at Cud and shoot my head like, I just told you to put that seatbelt on. He like, man, you know, I said, Cud, man, I said, I told you, man, I'm saying, I'm dirty, man. I'm, if he searches, man, you know, something, you know, might, might, you know what I mean, get pinched. He like, and this one, this is why I'm so tight with Lurch because he ain't never front, you know what I'm saying? He like, yo, Cuz, man, I mean, you, you did tell me, you know what I'm saying? We go down, Cuz, I'm riding. Ain't, ain't, ain't no question, I'm riding. You know what I'm saying? So the cop pulled, come back in my life registration. So, is there anything in the car I need to know about? Nah, not at all. You know what I'm saying? I'm keeping my cool. I'm swallowing my spit. I'm nervous. You know what I'm saying? So, first thing he do is, can I search? I said, nah. Lurch, he, he popping over the middle. For what? Searches for what? You know what I'm saying? Um, Jack, he in the back, like, you know what I mean? He's shaking his head, like, man, this ain't gonna go good. You know what I mean? So, I'm like, nah, you can't search. He said, well, what, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna bring the dog and I'm gonna search anyway. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I like, fuck it, man, go ahead and search. You know what I mean? Why do you say that? Why do you say that? Why would you say something like that to give them consent to search? Knowing you dirty. You make them, make them niggas work, man. If they're gonna, they gonna get you dirty, man, make them work. I'm like, man, cuz I, I know what to say. Never been, never in my life been tested. Never been under that kind of pressure. So what happens is, you know, he tell Rob Jack, get out first, get me out. Tell Lurch to get out. Now, mind you, Lurch, he dirty himself. He got crack on him. He take the crack stuff in the, you know, he a big guy. He shove it in his neighbor. Lift his shirt up, pat him down, he Gucci. You know, pat me down, I'm good. Pat Jack dirty, good. You know what I'm saying? Take the keys out of the ignition, pop the trunk. I look at Lurch, man, shake my head, yo. You know what I'm saying? Hurt, like, you know what I mean? Hurt. I, I, we going down. You know what I mean? There's no question about it. He go in the trunk, he's looking around, go in the car, look around. Close the trunk, close the doors. Said, y'all guys, y'all, y'all be careful, man. Y'all, y'all, you know what I'm saying? And that's the first time right there. I, I ever been tested to the point where I, I told cuz, we got back in the car. I said, I'm done, yo. Like, this ain't for me. You know what I mean? This is not for me. We go to we go to uh, up the street to to, to Burris, going to Burris parking lot, whatever. Um, I popped the trunk. Just to show these niggas how real it was. I popped the trunk. I had to, I had to work stash in the um a spark plug wire box. I smack the box, bow! Shit fly, shit fly all over the trunk, man. Come right out, the coke come right out of the trunk. I said, man, that was that easy cause for us to go down, man. You know what I'm saying? But it wasn't my time, it wasn't my time to get in no, 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 no shit like that. You know what I'm saying? My name's Vermont Bolden. Uh, Corey's my nephew. Uh, I look at Corey and uh, uh, I vision myself. So uh, he has a strong personality opposed to standing for what he believes in and uh, going after for what he wants. So uh, I will say, uh, looking at him, I think that uh, he took a lot of that from me. So uh, I think that was very uh, encouraging for us, like uh, to see him to to move in life the way he's moving. So, which is uh, not to say that I always did the right thing, but 
but I always try to encourage them, even though when they may not think that I was encouraging. So, you know, it, life is uh, it, it's not easy. It, it's difficult, but in the same taking, uh, your life experience is what teaches you. So, um, you know, to be proud of you and, and give direction to your family. So, I think that's the. Uh, nutshell for it like you know, and uh, working hard and, and uh, take care of uh, family values and uh, you know being committed to your family so I think that's important I think that's real so I, I put myself in the spotlight to be that nigga you know what I'm saying at that time I, I, that's how that's what I had to do you know what I mean you know eyes against me eyes stacked against me I don't play sports you know what I mean? I ain't the most fit guy, so I put myself in the spotlight to Sean. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I had to do. But, you know what I mean? Even then, I was done. You know what I mean? I was done. I was done. I was done selling, you know what I mean? Now, I'm strictly on my barbership now. What, is, what inspires me? Uh, well, before my kids, what inspired me was my, probably my mom. Uh, you know, seeing her work as hard as she did, pretty much, man. You never want to see your mom work to the point where she can't enjoy herself. You know what I mean? That's kind of how my mom is. My mom been working. I'm 27. My mom worked two jobs my whole life. You know what I mean? One was uh, Alan Foods. And, and I always say that job right there is, is for no human being. Because, man, like, they, they, you know, I worked there before, so I pretty much know what the sister does. So, you know what I mean? Just her being as hard as she was. That was that was motivation me for, for me to get to the point where I can make sure that she is good forever. Like I want to be able to, to surprise my mom with something nice, car, be a car, something nice. I mean, you know, not necessarily a house or nothing like that. You know what I mean? But if my change got like that, definitely without a question. You know what I'm saying? But that's that's that's, that's one of my motivations, man. And I know, something that's motivates me is, is, is these guys right here, my my kids, man. Like. I'm sure anybody with kids, man, would feel the same way. I mean, but how they came, it was it was it was a plan. My boys uh, are brothers, but they do have different mothers. So how they came was not was not a plan of mine. Um, the same age, they four months apart, but uh, nonetheless, man, I wouldn't trade them for the world. You know what I mean? And and they they, they make me feel better. Me, it's a lot of niggas still living because of these guys, man. I want to make that I mean, clear, like. I've been days, man, when niggas have, have crossed me and did things to me that, that my boys want to go, you know what I mean, just go at them, you know what I'm saying? And you got to reflect, like, it's not about you. It's not about a personal feeling. It's about people that's, people that's depend on you and need you. And these guys already need me. So I, I, I would never um, jeopardize, you know what I mean, my, my sanity or my freedom, you know what I mean, ever. I, I believe in life, man. You, you uh get what you put out, man. Like, I, I, I said, I've been cutting hair since I was 15, man, and when I, when I first made it official to be a barber, man, I, I dedicated myself, man, all my time to it. You know what I'm saying? It's been days where I ain't get a chance to go to my son's birthday parties or, you know, me and, me and my uh, baby mom or whatever, or my son's mother. You know what I mean? We, we, we get into it about the situation, but, you know, I, I'm dedicated to this thing to the fullest. And sometimes, you know, we never put money uh, before everything, but you know what I'm saying? When you when you give it your all, it pay off in the long run. That's how that's how I, that's how I feel about everything I do, man. I think about all the things that led me to this point. You know what I'm saying? I won't let my mom down, myself down, or my kids. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's one thing that, that, that keeps me motivated. And I know what I gotta do to get where I, to get where I need to be. As far as life, man, I tell I tell all the kids, man. Like as of the day, I'm doing also doing um. I'm doing career day for the kids at Boys and Girls Club, man. And I got some wise words to give them, you know what I'm saying? I just want to see everybody make it to a point in life, man, where they're comfortable. You know what I mean? I don't want to see no young kid back against the wall doing something they don't got to do, you know what I'm saying? And I want everybody to, to be successful in whatever they do. So, I think that's going to be a big, a big event for me today, man. I really want to talk to the kids and express where I came from, how I got here, and how I'm loving, how I'm loving life at this point, you know what I'm saying? No pressure. Don't have to worry about, you know, police, you know, follow me and all that. You know what I mean? Just unnecessary pressure. And I still and I still can pretty much buy, you know, what I want, you know, and it's getting to a point in life where I'm pretty much good, man. Y'all dig? Y'all ready to ride? Mm-hmm. Life, man, it's about chances. So when I made a chance to come to Seaford, because I'm from Maryland, to cut, you know what I'm saying? 
went full fledged. Went hard as I could. Now, got my own barbershop. Life is all right, you know what I'm saying? And where dedication comes, you know, much prosperity, prosperity and you can reap the benefits of hard work, you know what I'm saying? This is what we got, my barbershop.